Some people are actual fanboys, other people say it's Euro cringe. Let's see how good these pants actually are. Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today I want to have a look at the UF Pro Striker pants. To be specific, these are the Striker ULT pants. I bought them one and a half years ago from my own money, so they were not sponsored by UF Pro. And I wore them since then um, for almost all the shooting training I do. I wore them indoors, I wore them outdoors, in winter, in summer. So I have quite a bit of experience with these pants now. And I'd like to share with you today uh, what my takeaways are. I have one particular issue with these pants. And I actually talked to UF Pro about it. I will make a separate video about this that is coming out next week because it's just too much material and it really does not concern everybody who wears them, but only people with a certain body type, body shape, um, presumably. So I will leave this specific thing out today and you will find it in the next video. And today I will give you an overlook how these pants actually performed other than in this one thing. Okay, I'd suggest let's start at the top of the pants and I will show you all the features. Now, to begin with, this pant comes with an integrated belt, so you can't take it off. It's soon here at the back. And this belt already has the loop side of Velcro onto it. Um, you have the belt buckle here in front. You can exchange that. As you see, I um, bought a custom one just because I found it funny. And how you adjust the belt is you have Velcro straps here and you can tighten it and open it on both sides. And below that, you have one button, you have an additional hook, and then you have a zipper. Um, the zipper is a two-way zipper, so actually you can open it from the top and from below. Um, that works quite well. And I think the idea uh, from UF Pro side is to make it easier for people to pee when they are outdoors and are wearing the pants. Now, what do I have to say about the, the closing system, right? I mean, the, the button to start with the easy one is obviously it's a Scandinavian button. It's fine. I never had any issue with it. The same is true for the hook. It still holds up. Um, that's all good. The zipper works. although. And that's already the first thing. Um, I'm a little bit surprised because on the spots where the zipper is below the fabric, the fabric after now one and a half years and roughly 160 to 180 hours of training time in which I actually used the pants, um, the, the fabric already starts to, to get rippled over the zipper. And um, I mean, it's not true. So there is not a hole in it, but it, there is notable wear uh, in this area. But we will get to that. So now for the rest of the closing system. In the beginning, I thought the belt is a pretty good idea. And the intention to have a loop side here is obviously that you can take your battle belt and don't have to wear another belt with loop velcro below it but you can attach the hook side, the outer side of your battle belt directly to your pants. In theory, that would be a good idea. The issue is here that some manuf manufacturers of battle belts, um, for example, the GBRS one that I use, um, started to have the hook side on the inner belt and the actual battle belt has only a loop side. Um, the idea behind that is that you want to have the hooks away from your, from your clothing um, so that if you wear it a lot that um, it doesn't damage the fabric as quickly. And um, 
that basically neg uh, negates the purpose of this belt and it just gives you a lot of additional bulk around your waist. Now, is that UF Pro's fault? Is that GBRS fault? Well, that's a good question. I would say the belt makers can make their belt systems and maybe the pant makers should stick with the area which you are paid them for with the pant, right? So I would prefer to not have this belt in there. Could I cut it away? Yes, I could. But in that, in that case, the pants wouldn't hold up anymore. So I would always have to wear a belt. I couldn't just pull out the two lower belts. Um, so the battle, take the battle belt away and pull the lower belt out and sit in my car and drive home because I would automatically lose that pant, right? And that's also not uh, what you want to do. Now, one additional thing that I find a little bit annoying. Um, let's look at these in detail. So they are constructed in a way that you have Velcro on, um, on this buckle, bucket and the integrated belt actually runs below through another bucket buckle. So you have two belt buckles basically on top of each other. I'll try to show it here. So you have one belt buckle here for the attached belt and then you have another belt buckle on top of that for, for everything else. The issue is if you want to close this pant and we will get to the cut, but if you want to close this pant, you have to tighten the belt with the Velcro and put it here. Now, as soon as you have a little bit a slimmer waist, you have the issue that you have to close um, the Velcro under the belt loop. So you have to fiddle the Velcro through this belt loop in order to cinch it tight. And that can, as you see, be pretty annoying. So all in all, I'm not a big fan of the, of the belt system of the integrated. So um, even if I would have a battle belt with hooks to the inside, I would still add an additional belt that I can really cinch down and then put the belt on top of it. So in my opinion, they could completely leave this one out. It would reduce a lot of bulk around the, the waist and would be much more comfortable. Now, if you continue around, you will see you have three belt loops here at the back and you have a little bit of cushioning here at the back. I found this to be pretty nice if you wear a backpack. Um, it, that's a cool feature. Um, I wouldn't need again the Velcro, so, um, but that, that's actually cool. Now, since they attached this belt, um, they were able to make the, the remaining waist fabric super stretchy. So you have fairly stable fabric here, but this one is super stretchy. And um, that makes wearing it besides of the bulk from the belt quite comfortable. Um, that's, that's a good thing. Okay, I think that's already everything I have to say about the belt line. Um, what you can see here, um, I'm wearing my IFAC on my back, on my battle belt. And only the, um, the friction from the IFAC has also already roughed up this fabric um, considerably. So I, I don't wear a lot of backpacks in training. My plate carrier doesn't go as, as far down. So there is no other um, thing that gives friction to that uh, besides my IFAC. And um, that's a little bit disappointing for a, uh, for a 220 bucks pants, right? I mean, again, we are talking about 170 uh, hours of training at the most. Okay, then um, let's go over the pockets because if this um, pants ha pant has one thing, then it's a lot of pockets. Let's start with the front. You have just ordinary pockets here. They are deep enough to put stuff in there. Um, nothing to complain about them. Um, the inside is mesh or a certain type of fabrics with, with hole in it. It's not real mesh. Um, 
yeah, that's maybe because the, the pants are made for warmer climate. I mean, I do a lot of indoor training. This is why I use them. Um, and I don't have anything to complain, complain about these pockets. Um, they are fine next to them. And basically this would be here on the side. You have another pocket and that's more or less a pocket for a multi-tool. Let me grab one. So I have my Leatherman here. And when I found that pocket, I was pretty stoked because I thought it's, it's a nice place for a Leatherman, right? So you can see here, you have it on the side. Um, there comes a butt now, and that's a pretty big butt because given the fact that this position is directly here on top of the, well, basically the where, where the seam of your pants would be, right? As soon as if you slide down something, if you have to lay on the side, right? You punch that metal thing directly onto the bony part of your, of your upper leg joint, right? So it's very uncomfortable. Um, the same would be true if you have a mag in there, maybe even worse. So I don't really use this pant, uh, this pant, this, this pocket. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know what you would put in there, but as soon as you lie on it, just due to the position, it's very uncomfortable. This pocket um, has another small pocket on top of it. It closes up with a zipper. Um, it's a nice detail. There isn't too much that you can put into it. Maybe your earphones or something like that. A compass won't fit. Um, yeah, um, I ended up having my Letterman in there and that worked quite well. Okay, then let's now go to the backside of the pant. Here on the backside, you can see it. It's a different type of fabric. Um, it's, a, it's a very stretchy fabric, the same that they used for the waistline. Um, that makes it actually quite comfortable to wear. I only have good things to say about that one, um, but there are no pockets on the backside. Um, this is something that I found a little bit um, weird, but also truth be told, I really didn't miss them that much, right? At the beginning I was like, well, wait, where are my pockets? Um, but then when you get used to it, it's, um, it's really not a big deal. But you have to be aware they are not here. Um, in terms of um, durability, I don't ca uh, can't say anything bad about the backside. Um, everything here holds up quite well, um, but I'm also not sitting a lot on my ass if I run around the train. So um, yeah, that remains to be seen. Another pocket is the side pocket that we have here. It's on the side of the pants. Per default, uh, from the fabric, it comes with buttons. Um, they deliver Velcro with it, so you can actually change the configuration. Um, I never saw the need to do that. And um, yeah, if you close the, the back button, um, the, the opening is pretty tight, right? So you only have a small opening left. And so if you are afraid of losing stuff while you're running, you can still have access to the pocket, but notably decrease the, the opening that it has. Um, these pockets are one of the things that I like the most about this pants. Um, the upper opening has a stretch in it. That's very nice. And the inside of this pocket has stretch loops. And you have to get used to the sizes of the stretch loops a bit. Um, I noted that the front loop exactly holds a Glock magazine. The center loop holds onto an AR magazine very well. And the back loop is a little bit bigger. I would fathom that you can put a 308 mag in there and it holds it tight in your, um, in your pocket, even if you run. So this is, this is a very good thing. And I like these pockets a lot. You can not only access them from the top, but you have a zipper here. And this zipper has a dual function. So it connects the pocket with a mesh to the inside of the, um, of the pants so that it um, can be used as a ventilation. So if you're hot, you open up these zippers. 
but you also have an additional zipper that provides you with the ability to grab through that front zipper into the pocket. So to illustrate that, you have the pocket here. Here is the zipper that you open when, uh, when you need ventilation. And then you have another zipper inside where you can grab into the pocket. I never needed that one, um, but I also did not um, maybe lie around a lot or something like that. So um, it's, it's a nice detail for me again, not really necessary, um, but the ventilation is nice. So um, the ventilation opening, they're good. And um, they're you, yeah, they're usable, quite usable. I, I actually open them a lot. Um, the pockets are the same on the left and on the right side, so um, there is no difference there. Some pants I know have different pockets, but um, not this one. Okay, then um, let's go uh, further down to the to the knee pads. Now, this these pants are made for internal knee pads. And you can see these are the, this is my standing side. Um, and the knee pads are also where I have the most of my grievances, but I will discuss that specifically in the other video. Um, I will still show them to you. You have a zipper here. You can the knee, take out the knee pads. And the system of UF Pro is that you can buy um, foam knee pads and hardcover knee pads out of plastic and you just put the hard cover knee pads into the foam knee pads and then slide the foam knee pads into these. Um, the pockets self, uh, themselves are already a little bit cushioned so I used them for a few weeks without knee pads but um, so without these knee pads but as soon as you really want to go hard on gravel etc um, it's a good thing to have these knee pads and um, yeah, so far they are, they are fine. Um, you can't really adjust the position of the knee pads. On the back side, let me show that to you. You have a piece of Velcro where you can tighten or loosen um, the, the leg of the, of the pants so you can actually make it tighter but you have no possibility to adjust the height of the knee pack, so where it sits on your leg, or the, um, where it sits in an, in an X axis, right? So um, it's really only you can cinch it down a little bit, um, but you can't really adjust the, the position of the knee pad. I also saw that um, UF Pro is um, promoting a new striker pant right now, where they will have the possibility to adjust the, the height of the knee pad, um, but uh, it remains to be seen how well that works. Below the knee pad, there is another piece of stretch, um, and on the, on the foot part, you have a zipper um, that also provides you the, the ability to um, vent your, your pants a little bit. I did not often use that one. Um, you can tighten the, the bottom of the leg. Um, I, I didn't need that, right? So um, yeah, that's, it's a little bit a gimmick, but um, yeah, as I said, I really didn't need that yet. Now it's an ultralight pant. So I also wore it in summer conditions on a big, in a big training area of the um, Italian military. Uh, we were there uh, during sunshine uh, in, a, in very humid conditions. And I was still hot. So it's not like a real lightweight pant. It's still a combat pant, right? And um, yeah, there has to be a compromise when it comes to durability and, um, and lightweight. But again, that especially with the kneecaps, will be a separate topic. What is my overall impression with the pant? Um, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with the durability, especially also in the area up here. Um, let me put the knee pads to the side. 
So we have the front here and I'm wearing my pistol on the right side. So my leg strap goes down here and there is no, uh, you, um, no sign of wear um, at all. But that also means that my gun is often hanging down to the left side. And here on the left side of the pant, on the fabric, I have considerable wear. Um, I saw that pretty early, the, the fabric gets rough, um, the color changes, and um, I'm not sure how long this will actually hold. And um, yes, I understand it's, it's a lighter pant, right, compared to the, to the Striker X. Um, but I'm still somewhat, I would have expected a little bit more because again, we're talking about 160 hours of use, right? So we're not talking about uh, an in-service use for, for, an, for a year. So I'm, I'm not super happy about the durability. To summarize it, um, I think UF Pro has some very smart people working on stuff. Um, but sometimes I also feel that simpler is better, right? Especially with that belt system. Um, yes, you can try to improve things, but you have to be careful to not start overthinking things. And I think that with this pant, this is a little bit what they did. There are so many gimmicks in there, right? Um, that sometimes it feels a little like it's, a, it's meant to be Gucci, but it's no longer practical, right? All the improvements are something that uh, look good in an advertisement or something like that. But if you use it, you don't feel a lot of benefit that they provide you, right? In my opinion, the best thing is really the, the, rubber, um, the rubber loops inside of the side pockets. They are awesome. Um, you can actually store additional magazines in there and run with it and you don't have an issue. Um, everything else, like I said, the belt loop, the additional ventilation down here, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, right? Um, I said the ventilation here is quite nice, that, that's okay. Um, but all the other gimmicks, um, also the, the cushioning here, etc., is not really necessary. And the bad thing is, if they build a lot of these gimmicks into these pants, um, it shows with the price. And we're not at the cry level, right? Because you will pay 400 bucks for a cry pants. We're also not um, on the level of an Arcturix um, combat pants or the Arcturix assault pants. They are also a little bit more expensive, um, but we are more expensive than, for example, Claw Gear or Arctis. Um, now, I would say we're currently testing that, but Helicontex might be a little bit lower in quality, but they are considerably cheaper. Um, so the pant is somewhat a compromise. Um, I see a lot of um, actual police units um, using it, but um, as a friend of mine uh, said very, very fittingly, um, well, what does a police officer do all day, right? Uh, he, he walks through the city, um, drives in his car. A police officer is not constantly on his knees and um, uh, doing battle and the, all the police units, the specialized, the SWAT units, the hostage rescue units, etc. Um, they take him out of the um, of their gear shed um, when there actually something happens and then they have one for that and they have other pants for training. So would I buy that pant again? <laughs> to be honest, likely not because the, I would rather buy two cheaper pants um, that don't have that many gimmicks. And um, yeah, I would, I would leave it with that. Okay, so as said, next week I will do a video about the actual point where this pant broke down on me, um, where I, 
now actually have a very precise thing that doesn't work, where we have a mistake in construction, at least for some body types, and uh, where I have been in discussion with UF Pro about. Okay, so if you liked that video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any question on the pant or on gear choices, please post it in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time that you spent here and I'll see you next time.